All right, everybody, welcome back. This is going to be part four of creating our calculator. There's a few things right off the bat that I want to fix that aren't really mistakes, but they make it a little easier, I guess, that we did in parts one and two. And by the way, in three, I guess, because this is what, this is going to be part four. I just dropped a part two. I just made it public, and now I'm uploading part three. So yeah, this will be part four. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this series, and hopefully you're following along, because I mentioned this before. This is a good starter application for your portfolio. And let's just uh, let's just open up Visual Studio here and talk about a few of the things that I want to change. So the first one is actually going to be the columns in our XAML. Uh, in part three, you if you watch that part, which I recommend you do, you notice that I had to play around with the width. And here's the thing about even columns in WPF that I kind of forgot. And I mentioned this before, I haven't <laughs> I haven't really written WPF at work in quite some time, so I'm a little bit rusty, but uh, it's slowly coming back to me. Anyway, what you can do if you want to make these all the same size is you can actually give it a star. And you can think of the star as a fraction. And I'll go ahead and go through an example really quick uh, and a better way to think of this. So if we do it like this, now these are all even, or each one is a star. So each one is pretty much a fourth of the total size. Now if I want to make this um, two-fifths, this first column, I could put a two right here. And now you can see that it takes up two spots and the rest only take up one. So you can think of it as fractions. So this is taking up two and then the total number of stars is five, so two-fifths. And then three would be, uh, what would that be? Half, right? Because there's three stars now plus these other three. Um, so that would be one half. And if you look at here, it, it's, it's pretty easy to tell at least I hope it's easy that it goes right down the middle, so it's a half. So that's what we can do. We can put each one as the star, and then each one's just going to take one-fourth of the available space. And the difference between this and auto, you might have seen this before, maybe not, maybe this is the first time, auto just takes up as much space as it needs. And you can see that it only takes up as much space as the content of the cells, I guess. Um, so if we didn't explicitly put a size for the buttons, it's just going to take up the size of the content in those buttons. And that's why it looks like that. So I'm going to change that back to a star. And now these are all evenly, um, you know, evenly spaced, I guess. All right. And another thing I wanted to do is I wanted to go into code behind. And I wanted to do a little bit of binding. Because in part three, I went ahead and I made the string output, uh, which initially was nothing, which is fine. That's how we want it to be. Um, and then as they press buttons, or as the user presses buttons, we add to that output. And then we set the output text block um, text attribute to output that string. So what we can actually do is we can actually set this uh, and bind it to output here in the code behind. Okay, and the first thing we want to do before we start messing with the XAML um, in the GUI is to set the data context. And all the data context is is anything in the XAML, uh, it, it tells it where to look for the binding variables. So I'm going to do this dot data context is going to equal this, which basically means look in this class, this main window uh, class here and look for the variable whatever whatever we we end up binding to this text block so it lets it lets the text block know when it's binding where to look for that binding variable so what we can do is we can actually uh, take the text attribute now and we do curly braces and put binding and then whatever variable and then we can set it to our output string here. So output. Okay, let's see if this works. I think I think this will work. I haven't done binding in quite some time either. <laughs> but I told you guys I'd be raw. And uh, look at that. 
check that out. It's actually working. I didn't have to look anything up. Cool. So now we we did a little, I would say more advanced things, I guess, uh, and made this a little prettier. So the next thing I want to do is we did all the number buttons. Now I want to do, let's bring up the calculator again for reference. Next thing I want to do is add the um, operators that we can do. So I'm thinking I'm going to put the equals right here and then the divide times minus plus operators um, in that order down here on the far right. So why don't we do that? Why don't we basically just copy this button? All right, we're going to keep the same format. Um, we're just going to change. There we go, plus button. We're just going to change the name, the content, right? So it's going to be the plus sign. We're going to change where it's at. Uh, so the row is fine, I think, because the plus is at the bottom, right? And I'm going to keep that in my other monitor here, um, but you can trust me. And we want to move it over two, so I'm going to change the column to three. And now you can see that looks better. And above that, I'm just going to keep them in order. So above the plus is the minus. So the only difference here between that and the plus is the content, the name, and its upper row. So was that three? Is that right? Three and three? Yeah. OK. And minus button. Plus button, minus button. I think those are good names. They work. Minus, and I think that's good. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put something above it. Instead of minus button, this is going to be the times. So uh, maybe I shouldn't name it plus, minus. Maybe I should name it addition, subtraction, um, product, or multiplication. I don't know. Uh, no, nah, let's just keep it like this. Times. You can name it whatever you want if you're following along. But I'm going to put an X and we are going to move up a row. So two. Looks good. And something I might play around with in a future video is the font of all of these. Uh, just to see if any look different. Um, so this is a tricky one, the division. Should we just use this? Because there's no explicit key that we can use for, there's no, there's no key on a keyboard, right, that looks like this. So I wonder if we can use some kind of ASCII value or, I don't know, we might have to search that up. We might have to investigate on that. So let's at least set it up. And this is going to be, no, this is going to be one. Yeah, that doesn't look right. Let's try to find the ASCII value for the division. All right, so that took me a lot more researching than I think it should have. Um, but what I ended up doing is I just looked for the Unicode of um, this character right here for divide. And it's actually 0, 0, F7. And then it seems like the way to display it is in the code behind. I tried putting it in the button content right here. And then I think uh, it's like slash u, if I remember. I'll have to look at the code behind. No. It's backslash u. Whoops, not i. Like that. Uh, but it doesn't recognize that. It just puts that. So I'm just going to leave it blank. It leaves it blank like this. But in the main window, um, in the constructor for it, I just, at the very end, I put the content of that button as this. And then you can see when we start it, when it actually sets to that, it's going to put the divide symbol. Um, so that's one that a little bit tricky. Um, there might be a better way. I'm not quite sure of it, but that's the way I'm going to go with right now. So you will notice that it's going to be blank in the previewer here. However, that's not going to be the case. Um, okay, so we added those buttons, and I think that's... How much time did I... Yeah. That's going to be enough for today. Um, in the next video, 
I plan on doing the operations. So we're going to do something very similar to pressing the um, number buttons and just do the arithmetic after pressing the operators. So hopefully you guys are excited and I will see you in the next video.